Today, Brody and I are tag teaming the restoration of these vintage, probably 30 year old White's Packer boots. We found these at a thrift store in preparation for that, how to effectively buy a pair of boots from thrift store. And um, we got them for like 40 or 50 bucks, but they retail brand new for 550. And obviously they're 30 or 40 years old, so they've kind of changed the style, but they're pretty cool either way. So first thing to do, just like any boot cleaning or restoration, remove the laces. So you can kind of get into that tongue area and get all that built up dirt and grime removed from within the little creases and um, deep inside the tongue. Next, just dry brush the whole boot just to get all that loose dirt and grime with out of the welt and out of the little spaces and kind of clean up the thread. Next thing Brody's doing is just using that toothbrush to get a little bit more of the fine spots where you don't want to use maybe as rough of a brush. And then finally finishing up with the just the shoe brush here to, to get any last little particles out of there. And then now we're just kind of cleaning around the eyelets here. This isn't super necessary, but for the video, it's fun to do just to pull all that built up grime and the, the brass, how it reacts to the leather and the sweat and the dirt kind of gets a little bit of that green buildup and it's just kind of cool to watch it pop out. And then the way that they set these rivets, they, they don't punch the holes. So when he's pulling these little, little uh, beads out, that's from the original setting of those rivets. So it's kind of interesting. So pretty big difference before and then after just cleans it up a little bit. It's not a necessary step, but it definitely cleans up the look. And, and uh, if anything, it's just fun to do. Next thing we're going to do is just wash the boot. So just a classic saddle soap wash, just lather it up, put some water in there and spread it all over the boot. I like to personally take it panel by panel. Brody likes to do half of a boot at a time. It doesn't really matter. I just don't like to let the saddle soap soak in for a really long time. But so you can do it half a boot at a time, whole boot at a time. I just wouldn't let it sit for super long. Then he's going over it again with a little less uh, concentrated saddle soap wash and just trying to get all that years of build up dirt and just wiping it off. And we're gonna do a, a wet wash to get any of the residue off, but I like to just use a, a, a towel and, and wipe off as much of the dirt and saddle soap as you can. Now we saddle soap in the welt, and you're gonna see here with the welt that whoever resold these, not whites, but whatever cobbler did, did not remove the previous stitchings around the welt, and so the welt's just a complete disaster. I'll show you a little bit further how bad it looks. Lazy cobblers. This coming from me, who's barely, uh, I'm not even a cobbler, I'm like a garage cobbler. But that's, that's the cool thing about this video is we're gonna show you how you can do it at home if you don't wanna take it to a cobbler or you just wanna try doing it at home. Because a lot of times, most of the, these boots that we're doing, you, you can do it at home. It's a little bit riskier because you don't, you run the risk of not doing it correctly, but I think it's fun to kind of learn the process and be able to do some of these, these smaller cobbling jobs at home. So now we just did that water rinse to get any of the extra saddle soap and residue off of there to make sure you're not getting it deep into the pores of the leather. So now quick before and after. And already it's looking super good. You know, now you can see that color in the, the welt stitching is coming back and, and some of that color that was in the scratches is coming out. So we're gonna have to fix the color in those big gouges and scratches. So you can see that, that welt, how many stitches are in there? That's because the previous cobbler was lazy. So now there's a little bit of spray paint or some sort of uh, speckly residue on there. So we just use a little bit of that Angelus um, cleaner. It's like a little paint remover. We'll put it in the description just to not remove the, the coating on top of the leather or any dye, but just enough to, to break down that spray paint and pull it off so that we get a nice clean leather finish. I think it's just alcohol based. So you could probably do it with just rubbing alcohol, but just be careful because rubbing alcohol will pull off the top layer of leather. So if you are gonna do something like this, just make sure you test it on a small area that's not gonna be super affected by discoloration. So maybe like um, somewhere on the counter or at the tongue or something. Much better. Doesn't have those speckly uh, sparkles or spray paint or whatever it was anymore. And all that weird white stuff, lettering, or I don't even know, what, I don't know what that was. Okay, now that we've got it cleaned up, let's start dyeing these little gouges and stuff to kind of bring some of the color even to even it back out. And we're just using Angelus leather dye. And because it's a lighter brown, the light brown dye wasn't light enough. So we use a little bit of alcohol to dilute it, to bring that color a little bit brighter. Um, just double check if you're ever gonna dilute a dye, make sure you check if it's alcohol-based, water-based or oil-based and use that accordingly. 
So this big scratch here, you'll be surprised at how big of a difference just adding that little bit of dye in there makes. And it, the thing with this type of dye is it's just like dyeing a piece of wood. You gotta be careful because with an exposed grain, it'll soak it in really, really heavily and it'll darken it too much. So just be really careful and take it scratch by scratch and test it first. Now I'm stepping in to start working on the top lift. And we didn't know exactly how this hill was structured. If these nails that we're gonna pull here held the whole hill stack on, if there was more nails underneath. So I wanted just to pop, use that little hole punch to pop some of that rubber off so we can kind of get an idea and try to remove the top lift without removing the nails to see if there was nails um, holding the underneath in the hill stack. So you can see I'm just popping these off. And if you know there's nails underneath, you can probably just pull that hill, that top lift off without ruining the hill, but just be careful with it if you're doing it at home. It's worth the time just to kind of investigate and make sure you're not removing nails that are structure, structural. <laughs> kind of an interesting process. And so now I'm gonna start peeling this hill off. And as you can see, it's pretty much, all the glue's gone, it's, it's such an old boot. And as I'm peeling this away, you can see that nail's kind of coming off. And if, if, there was not, if there wasn't any reinforcing nails, we would have just left those nails in there and pulled the top lift off and hammer them deeper. But you can see there's little um, wooden pegs that give the heel the structure and um, hold that heel together. So it was totally fine if we pulled these, these nails out and the little washers that are in the top lift. We're just gonna put a new top lift on there and put some new nails down in there. Yeah, see those little pegs there? That's what holds the whole structure of the heel together. So I'm just flattening them out, making sure they're nice and flat before we sand them. And I'm also putting on a, an, a, on a uh, cobbler's anvil that you can get on the classifieds for like 20 bucks, they're super handy. So we got the new top lift here, showing the difference between how worn out the previous one was. And the tread on the, the, the ball of the foot was pretty good, so we're not gonna replace that, because a lot of times the heel wears out first and you can get away with just, just a top lift replacement for most of these style of boots. Now I'm just roughing it up so that glue adheres a little bit better. It's just a rougher we got from Weaver Leather Supply. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Now we're roughing up that leather on the heel so it adheres better and get some of that dirt and grime that's been built up over the years of the cowboy that wore these. I'm assuming it was a cowboy because he's got some serious outward roll on his ankles and I assume it's because he's riding horses and he's got that saddle walk. Okay, now we're putting some glue on this. So this is that contact cement. It's, it's pretty popular in the cobbling world. It's a really strong contact cement. So I, I, may, I maybe put a little bit too much on. Like I said, this is more of like garage cobbling. I've learned a lot of this from Trenton Heath, their channel, um, Beto's uh, cobbling or leatherworking. I'll put links to their channel in the description. It's a really great resource. So we let the glue set up and then reactivate it with the heat gun. Learned that from Trenton and Heath. And now I'm just gonna line it up and put it on there. And the thing with this contact cement, as soon as it touches, it's hard to get it off. And the really interesting thing about this is it takes a certain amount of pressure to activate that glue to its full strength. So that's why you see cobblers using big presses to press the parts of the, the boot together. We're just using the hammer and that, that cobbler's anvil because we don't have one of those big presses. Now we're just hammering those nails down into the heel that we removed. These are replacement nails countersinking it with a drill bit because I couldn't find a normal countersink. And so we're, I thought I would challenge myself and see how good I am with the hammers. We lined up all the nails. And I tried to hit them with one hit each and I, I almost got them all. I think the second to last one was the only one I missed. And that was a little baby hammer too, so cut me some slack. And now I'm gonna shape the hill. I'm cleaning up the, the sanding drum first. And this is, this is kind of a tough part because this, this is really hard to do because if you touch even a little bit of that sanding drum to the upper leather, you're gonna remove all that dye and all the coloring and, it's, and it, it'll ruin the look of the, the upper of the boot. So I gotta be really careful here and just kind of round it out. And I'm also hitting the edges of the heel stack just to make sure that we get a nice, clean, even finish. And it, it looks as good as possible and as, as new as possible for what we're working with. And this is my favorite part. I love, I love doing the heel stacks and, and trying to get it back to as new looking as possible. And, it's kind of messy, but it's, it's my favorite part of doing these type of builds or restorations. Okay, now Brody's back in and he's gonna start working through the grits and getting that heel really nice and even and shined up, get some of those ridges removed, just so that we got a nice shiny Packer cowboy heel. 
You don't have to do this step. You could just do what I did and just kind of hand sand it or hand trim it, but it really makes a big difference. And in this next step, you're going to see, we're going to do a, a wax polish shine on some on the heel and on the heel counter to really bring that color back and that shine back. Already it's a huge difference and I'm, I'm already super happy with it. Now to the conditioning and the fire shine. So before we condition it, we're just, we're just cleaning up some of these loose threads and some of the leather fibers that you can just burn off. And we're gonna use Chamberlain's because I, I like Chamberlain's because it's a good conditioner. It's not a super deep conditioner, and but it doesn't darken the leather that much. It's still gonna bring some of the darkness back of this leather because this leather has been sitting probably for 20 years or 30 years or even 40 years without any conditioner. So he's just slathering on, getting that heel stack nice and conditioned. I like Chamberlain's and Big Four. Both of them I use kind of interchangeably. I think Chamberlain's is maybe a little bit more conditioning, but Big Four gives you a little bit better shine. And I'll put a link to both of them in the description. I personally like that lighter look of the original boot without the conditioning, but for the length or the longevity and the health of the boot, you need some conditioner in there. Otherwise those leather fibers deep inside the leather's core don't get lubricated and they have a tendency to break and split. And that's why leather end up, ends up splitting most of the time is because it's not conditioned enough. So for the longevity of the boot, we're conditioned it, even though I like the look of that really dry kind of tan color. Don't forget to condition the tongue, it's important. Okay, now we've got it nice and conditioned. We let it dry for a while, so now Brody's gonna just brush off any extra and kind of work in any of that surface uh, residue that's left on top with that big Angelus brush. And then the next thing we're gonna do is once we get that conditioned, it, the color will slightly come back as it sits for a couple weeks, but the next thing we're gonna do is do the fire shine on the hill counter and on the hill stack and, and the welt to some degree. And this is just a Saphir uh, wax and you don't have to light it on fire, but it's just cool to do and it, it's fun to do. And so he's just applying a thin layer of wax, getting it worked into the leather. It's gonna help protect the leather, but more importantly, it's gonna give you that really nice shine. And you don't wanna do this over the flexible part of the boot. So that's why Brody's only doing it on the heel counter and on the heel itself, because you don't really get any flex there. Because if you have a layer of wax, it's just gonna crack and split if it's on a flexible area. Now we just add a little water to it to get that spit shine finished look. And now you can see that luster and that depth of color starting to come back. Now he's applying it to the heel and you'll see how much this heel stack is thirsty for conditioner and wax, it just absorbs it. I think he put like two or three different layers on top. And I like doing the wax on the heel because the heel is, anytime you're gonna be in an inch of water, your heel is gonna absorb some some of it. So if there's no if there's no wax to seal it, it's gonna absorb it and start um, expanding the leather and splitting the leather. So a wax, whether it's a wax shine or just a, a mink oil wax or some sort of wax on, the, on a heel stack is really good for it. So same type of thing, spit shine on it to bring that luster back melting that whole can of wax. And now he's applying it to that leather midsole. Same type of deal. It just gives you another layer of protection. It brings that shine back and it allows it to repel water as much as possible because leather really does absorb a lot of water if you're not careful with it. Then just using that, that Zippo to, to remelt that wax and get it to sink into the pores a little bit better. And we'll do one more quick spit shine and, and run the brush over it one more time to get any extra residue off, any little particles that we missed and just give it one more final polish. And the last step is we're gonna add one of our Rose Anvil Western Kilties and I'll put a link to these in the description. I wanted to make these kilties a little bit different than everyone else makes them because everyone makes really thick, heavy kilties. And when you put a, a new kiltie on, sometimes it changes the way your boot fits. Well, these give you all the protection and all the strength of a normal kiltie, but they break in a lot faster. They're a lot easier to add to a boot that you've worn forever and they look good and they give you kind of a new look on your boot. So check those out in the description. And now time for the final reveal before that beat up old Western boot. Now to this nice cleaned up Packer boot. And it looks like these boots are significantly newer, brought a new life to them. They look cleaner. They get that depth of that cherry red leather, but just adding that little bit of extra work really brought the life back to these boots and, and a whole new wear to these boots because 
a lot of times these boots just get thrown away because they don't fit quite right. But adding that top lift and, re and fixing the posture of these boots and adding some longevity is one of my favorite aspects of doing these restorations. And especially when you can do them at home with really simple instructions and stuff that you can, and tools that you can find in most of your garages. So thanks for watching this. Now let's quickly talk about the sponsor of this video, Carl Friedrich and their new luggage. It comes with a robust handle and trolley systems for comfortable all day use and durable for all kinds of travel. It's a zipperless aluminum frame, so it's ultra durable and provides a rigid premium experience. And it's made from a, a structured polycarbonate shell designed to withstand the rigors of modern day travel. And it's TSA approved with the combination locks to keep your content safe. It also comes with Japanese design Hinamoto wheels that are silent 360 degree spinner wheels. So the suitcase goes wherever you go in silence. And it also has an option for a removable battery for carry on only to ensure you never run out of juice whenever you need it the most. So check out Carl Friedrich's luggage via the link in my description. Thanks again to Carl Friedrich.